For today's shoot, I'm going to be capturing a winter themed holiday image and I'm going to be using my two favorite beauty lenses. Everybody, Lindsay Adler here and happy holidays. Now every holiday season, I set aside time to create holiday themed images. I do so for holiday cards, for marketing, for social content, and also just to get into the holiday spirit. Now one of the things I try to do is to do this on a budget without spending a lot of money. And so very commonly I'll try to look at you know, holiday decorations and see how I could repurpose them for styling or for makeup. And that's something that I'm doing again this year. So I went online, went to Amazon, and I found these snowflake pieces of glitter. Uh, I got this for about $8. Uh, I think it's called table glitter, and it's kind of to decorate the holiday table to make it look a little bit more festive. But we decided that it was going to become makeup. And my talented makeup artist gave me this beautiful blue eye covered with this glitter. And so our theme would be something that's blues and whites and wintry and cool. And so then it was my job to take that makeup and bring it to life on set with my lighting, my lens choice, and any filters that I may choose. Now, because this is a beauty shoot, I knew that I was going to grab one of my two favorite lenses. These two lenses are the ones I use all the time whenever I'm shooting beauty. So the first lens is the Canon RF 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 lens. It is razor sharp. And honestly, for most people, it is a go-to for beauty and for headshots. It's because it gives you a lot of versatility. Now, if you've been one of those photographers that's used to the EF 70 to 200, well, you are in for a treat because the RF 70 to 200 is much more compact. It's much lighter, which makes it a lot easier when you're shooting long days. So that is one of my go-to lenses. But I also am going to play around with the Canon RF 100 millimeter macro lens. Now the macro lens is great anytime I wanna capture really close detail. So here's how I think of it. 70 to 200 is usually when I'm capturing maximum head to about shoulders. But then if I wanna capture even closer, maybe just the eyes to the lips or just the eyes or just the lips, well then in order to focus that closely and to magnify that much, I need to grab a macro lens. So these two together are going to cover the range I need for this shoot. So I'm going to use both of them. We have our beautiful makeup. I've talked a little bit about the lenses, but now let's talk about our scene and our lighting. Because the concept is blue, I have selected a blue jay background. This is by Savage Universal because it's going to complement the colors in the makeup. Now, how about the lighting? For the lighting, I said I wanted something that was also cool and wintry. And so I decided that something that would work quite well would be hard light on my subject to get reflections on the makeup and then a cool fill into the shadows to reinforce the cool tones and wintry feel. So let's take a look at what I've got. For my main light on the left hand side, I am using a Profoto Magnum Reflector with a grid. Now a Magnum Reflector is a hard light modifier. Uh, it's what I use very often if I'm trying to emulate the feel of the sun. Uh, it's nice because although it's hard, it still is a little bit smooth on the skin. So let's take a look at what that first light is giving us when photographing my subject. So you can see that this is creating a really beautiful chiseled light on her face and I'm getting some nice specularity on the glitter. You'll also notice that there's a lot of light on the background, but I don't have a light on the background. All of that is spill from the main light. And this is why I added the grid. If I didn't have the grid, even more light would hit the background. And I thought it would be a little bit competitive. So the main light, so far so good. But now what I'm going to do is add my fill light. Now, if you know anything about gels, one of the key tips and tricks I give people is that gels show up most in shadow areas. And so if you look at her face here, you can see some shadows underneath her jawline, uh, some shadows on the right hand side of the face. So now let me add the second light, which is a bare bulb with a cyan blue gel. You can see how pale her skin looks and how we have that beautiful blue tone to the shadows. And by the way, this is straight out of camera with no modifications at all. But she has a pale skin with hard light and the blue fill. I'm able to get this toning that is already looking like it's color graded. Now, one more tip that you can see is that there's just a little bit of blue, but if I wanna see more, well, I need to create more shadows. Now, by the way, when she turns to or away from the light, it'll change how many shadows are on her face and therefore how much blue we see. So you'll notice in some of my shots, when I have her turn away from the light, you'll see even more blue 
because I've created even more shadows on her face. If you would like to learn more about this, if using gels is foreign to you, you'll definitely wanna check out learnwithlindsay.com and then check out my class, The Magic of Gels, where I go into this concept much more in depth so that you can choose the exact colors and placement and saturation of the gels for your conceptual photos. All right, so I've got most of the ingredients in place, but there's one more thing that I may wanna add for some of the shots, and that is a four-point star filter. My four-point star filter, what it does is it takes any specular highlights, maybe picking up on the glitter, or any bright reflections, and it gives them little starbursts. And it's a fact that I really like if I want something to be whimsical or maybe glamorous. Now, I'm not sure if I'll use this in a lot of the images, but anytime I use it, I will definitely have to add contrast. The way that it works with any reflections, it often makes the shot look a little bit hazy, in addition to creating the bright star bursts. So I'm gonna add this in some of the images and in other ones, I'll skip it. And we're gonna see between my 100 macro and my 70 to 200, what type of beauty images we can create. All right, so with that, let's get the shot. All right, so there are some really beautiful wintry festive images using my two favorite lenses. Now, if you wanna see the gear that I use in the making of these shots, as well as the background, the lenses, the lights, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, visit adorama.com, as well as visiting them for any of the holiday gifts that you may be getting yourself or the photographer in your life. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your year and I will see you all in 2023. See you next time, guys.